Senator Milne. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And I rise today on behalf of the Australian Greens to support the motion of condolence and recognition on the loss of the Right Honourable John Malcolm Fraser, ACCH. As we've heard uh, from both the Leader of the Government and the Leader of the Opposition here in the Senate, Malcolm Fraser was a big man, a big man of Australian political history and a big man in that over his lifetime he was able to move, move from political positions that he did hold, hold on to the principles that backed them and therefore change his perspective on the, various, on the party that he uh, had once led. I want to particularly comment on this in my own experience because I was uh, a young person and at university uh, during the Vietnam War. Malcolm Fraser, as the Minister for Defence, was someone against whom uh, we led protests about the war. 1975 was the first election in which I voted. And so you can imagine, as a young person at university, the dismissal at that time was again something on which uh, young people had a very strong view and there were the protests to which Senator Abetz referred. 1983 was the last election of uh, Prime Minister Fraser as Prime Minister and that was at the height of the campaign to stop the Franklin Dam. So the protests, the civil engagement of those years was strong engagement. But so too has been the work that Malcolm Fraser has done throughout his entire life and since in upholding human rights. And as has just been spoken about, his reconciliation with uh, former Prime Minister Gough Whitlam was of great leadership. And as Mr Shorten has mentioned, it was more than reconciliation between two people. It was of a nation, because it certainly has been for all of us in, in my generation. Mr Fraser was born uh, to wealthy and well-connected uh, family. He adhered to the view that inherited money and privilege carry with it a responsibility to contribute to the greater good, and that is something that he stood by his entire life. He believed in the principle that the strong must look after the weak. And right up until days before his death, he was still advocating that the strong must look after the weak, must uphold international law, must uphold human decency, and was calling out the failure to do so. When he was at Oxford, it's been noted by uh, many of the commentators that his closest friends were from Zambia. And there's no doubt that his complete rejection of racism uh, was there from the very earliest years of his life. And it is extraordinary uh, that he took such a strong stand throughout his life against racism he, as has been noted, opposed the minority white rule in what was then Rhodesia. He then uh, stood strongly against apartheid in South Af Africa, as Senator Wong has just noted in his role on the eminent persons group uh, in 1985-86, taking a strong stand against apartheid. He actually visited Nelson Mandela in prison, and Nelson Mandela asked him whether Bradman was still alive. So that when Nelson Mandela became South Africa's first president, Malcolm Fraser took him a signed cricket bat to Nelson Mandela in recognition of a great unfinished innings, Don Bradman. It's just a, a small example of the kind of personal engagement and thoughtfulness 
that Malcolm Fraser had. He was often seen as an aloof person, and he himself said, frequently people mistake uh, shyness and aloofness. And I think in his case that was probably true, especially since we heard that he was sent to boarding school as an eight-year-old and spent all his school years in boarding school, then at Oxford, and so on. But he did embrace everyone, regardless of colour or creed, and we will always remember that it was his Aboriginal Land Rights Act in 1976 as Prime Minister that recognised that Aboriginal people in the Northern Territory should have control over their own land. He also, after the Vietnam War, embraced 70,000 Vietnamese refugees. One such family I looked after in Devonport uh, back in those days. And I can tell you they've gone on, as with the Vietnamese community broadly across Australia, made a huge contribution to this country. Their children here have graduated from university and making an enormous contribution. That was the work of a man who supported the Vietnam War, who supported conscription to the Vietnam War, but after the war saw the responsibility Australia had to look after people fleeing from that country. And of course, as Education Minister, he also insisted that Asian languages be taught in Australian schools. He also uh, set up a civil affairs unit to make sure that there was actually some focus in Australia's overseas aid programs that looked at poverty and education. It wasn't just about a war uh, and a conscription focus. Uh, right up until his death, you could say that he was a great uh, advocate for multicultural Australia, for the rights of refugees and asylum seekers, and that, of course, stemmed from his time in office, where, as we've heard, he did set up the family court, the ombudsman, first FOI laws, the federal police, but he also set up the Human Rights Commission. And right up until his death, he was still defending the Human Rights Commission and uh, its head, Gillian Triggs, saying enough is enough on the attack on the Human Rights Commission. In terms of the media, he set up SBS. And later on in his post-parliamentary career, he was a leader in the campaign against the concentration of media ownership. As Prime Minister, he rejected uh, the new, new neoliberal economics. He brought in a strong focus against the bottom of the harbour schemes. He was the Prime Minister who set up a pecuniary interest register here in this parliament and insisted that his cabinet members resign as directors of companies if they were to serve in his cabinet, recognising the conflict of interest that that would uh, result in. He was a great supporter of the Republic uh, and, at the end of his life, was not only a supporter of the Republic but a strong supporter of Australian independence in foreign policy, particularly uh, from the US, which had been a major shift from his support of the United States in the Vietnam War. But in his environmentalism, that is uh, where he really, um, uh, from the point of view of what you might say, if conservatives comes from conservation of what is, then he was a true conservationist in those years. He served on the ACF Council right back in the 1960s. Uh, he did offer uh, Robin Gray 500 million to build a coal-fired power station not to and not to proceed uh, with the Franklin Dam. Uh, it was the major election issue in 1983, and I'm very glad to say that his desire to stop the dam uh, was actually delivered, and we have stopped that dam. But he was one of those who stood out against it. Uh, in terms of the Great Barrier Reef, he was the person who uh, established the marine park and he took on the Bjelke Peterson government, in spite of the fact that it was Bjelke Peterson, the former Premier of Queensland, who had helped him out via the numbers with the Albert Field uh, scandal in terms of the Senate replacement. But Malcolm Fraser revoked the licence for sand mining on Fraser Island in 1976. He also banned whaling in Australia in 1979. 
uh, in spite of the fact that brought him into great conflict with the West Australian government of the day. He declared the Kakadu National Park and he had a great focus on the Antarctic and, uh, as Senator Betts has noted, moved the Antarctic Division uh, to Hobart. His recognition of the environment, his love of country, was probably uh, something that we've only come to appreciate, perhaps, in later years because his time as Prime Minister was so tumultuous for other reasons. But the last entry he made as a teenager before he went to Oxford said this, All my life I will have memories of calm night beneath the sky, of waking before dawn to see the sun rise in the east and of driving over lonely bush roads with dust eddying all around, the deformed Mallee scrub and the ghost farms, the great plains, the sand hills, the majestic mountains, the beautiful valleys and pleasant hills. All these are part of Australia and part of my memories. Among them, I will find my home." Well, he did. He not only found his home, he represented his home, Australia, in so many ways about which we feel proud. He was a man who stood by his principles for his whole life. He welcomed the outsider. He embraced the refugee. He rejected racism. He stood up for human rights. He stood up with people who cared for human rights. And he cared for country. He promoted the Aboriginal spirit of country and he worked to protect it. And I extend our sympathies to his widow Tammy and to the family and say that the Australian Greens recognise the great contribution that he made to Australia.